Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here with a very special guest, Brayden. What's going on guys? Thanks for having me, man. Thank you for being on the channel. And today we're gonna to talk about Brayden's journey to medical school. So my journey was one of my first videos on YouTube. I thought it'd be interesting to get another person's perspective, one of my classmates, to see how a journey to medical school is not a linear, one specific kind of path. It's very unique to each individual. So Brayden, maybe you could start by introducing yourself and then telling us a little bit about your journey to medical school. Yeah, for sure. So, hey guys, my name is Brayden. I'm a second year med student in uh, Manny's class here. We're actually in uh, the same small group, in the same uh, lab group, same everything pretty much, right? So we, we got to know each other quite well and become quite good friends. Uh, like Manny said, my journey to med school is like completely different than the, than the typical path. So. I guess I can start back in high school. Uh, I had some thoughts about being a, you know, going to med school uh, back in high school, but it was never really concrete. And I, I was really big into hockey back then too. So after high school, I kind of decided to pursue the hockey path. I played junior hockey for three years, um, you know, and that was, you know, quite the experience. Learned a lot through then. Uh, played for a bunch of different teams, and that's something we can get back to later. But uh, had my junior experience. Once that was done, I got recruited really last minute to go play uh, NCAA D3 hockey in the U.S. I started out in, um, you know, close to, in the Massachusetts area in Western Mass in Springfield uh, at a school called Western New England University. Played there for a couple of years, I uh, went to school there and what uh, at that point, you know, I got injured my second year, it's a long story, but I decided to kind of get uh, to transfer out and to go to a school called Trine University in Indiana. Uh, played there for two years, absolutely loved it took biochem over there. Um, at that point, third year university, I would say that's when I was like, okay, I really want to lean into med school. Uh, I had a really good shadowing experience in Indiana, the local hospital there, some really good mentors. And that, at that point, I really solidified, you know, my desire to go to, to medical school. So took the MCAT uh, the summer of my, my third and fourth year. Did that, uh, did okay, but I, I knew I had to retake it, but we'll get to that in a bit as well. Uh, did my last year, absolutely loved it, and then graduated. Uh, like Manny here, for me it took a really long time to get in, it took me three tries, so I had to take a couple gap years. In these gap years, I wasn't exactly sure what to do, um, you know, I started, at, there was a local high school back home that needed uh, supply teachers and they paid pretty well, I liked the work enough to, to go work, so I decided, you know what, I'll, I'll do that in the meantime while I figure out what else am I going to do during these gap years. Uh, I was really fortunate because at that school there was a really good prep hockey program. And because I play hockey, they asked me, hey, do you want to come on the ice in the afternoons instead of teaching in the classroom? I was like, absolutely, I'll go on the ice <laughs> and get paid to do that. So did that. Um, and as I was playing and stuff, you know, some of the guys started to ask me questions or like, hey, like, how, how is junior hockey? You know, how much time do you have there? How is college hockey? How do you even go about it? So it kind of started off that way. I started answering their questions. Then it started like, hey, like, can you coach me one on one and we'll pay you for it? I'm like, no, I'll just do it for free. It doesn't even matter, right? Like, I, I just want to, to help people out. But yeah. then after I did with a couple of guys, you know, it started more and more guys that were getting referred to me and like, hey, can you coach me? Can you uh, take a call with me and answer some questions? Kind of got into that. And, um, and then lo and behold today, like it's a long story from then to now, but it kind of snowballed into the hockey advising business that I have now. So, um, so long story short, like while I was doing supply teaching, I also started, you know, building a business of hockey advising, which is really similar to hockey agents, but it's a little bit different. Uh, you basically help guys go to the AAA level, junior level, and to, to the NCAA level, so university hockey in the U.S. Same type of path that I did, and um, and yeah, but I, I did that in my gap years, and then as I kept applying, because I knew med school was the end goal, I just kind of got sidetracked doing this a little bit. Uh, I finally got into to McGill on my third try. Uh, which was honestly an, an unbelievable day. Went to uh, tr trade that day for, for anything. It was amazing. Um, so once I got in there, I was like, you know what? Like, what am I going to do with this hockey advising side hustle that I kind of started? And I uh, decided to, you know, keep doing it and to kind of do both. And here I am now, second year, uh, doing med school, really enjoying it, meeting great people like Manny, but uh, at the same time, kind of still doing this uh, hockey business on the side here. So hopefully that's a good summary of the path I took in my life overall. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Thank you for sharing, Brayden. And I think what's really important here is that Brayden's path is very different from what you might think would be your typical path to medical school, right? Yeah. With all this hockey on the side. But I think that's what made you unique. 
right? And yeah. that's something we could talk about a little later. One key category uh, when you're applying to medical school should try to stand out in your application, right? So that's the way Braden did it. And what's also cool is that he mentioned that you're still doing this, right? Yeah. You're still very, very much involved in this business. Uh, and if you want to check it out, I really encourage you to check out Braden's website and his Instagram page and his YouTube channel, which I'll leave descriptions, uh, links to the, in the description down below. Uh, um, shout out. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. But what's important is that people say there's this, there's this belief that you can't do things outside of medical school. And that's the worst answer I've ever heard because yeah, there's so many true. things that I do outside of medical school. There's so many things you do outside, like you do this, you also play hockey, right? You yeah. still play, right? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Like, um, you know, for, for me, obviously med school takes a lot of time, takes a lot of discipline. You got to get your stuff done. But if you get it done and you're efficient, you can definitely do things outside of med school. Like for, for me, like I would say med school uh, takes maybe 60% of my time overall. The business maybe, you know, 30% and then there's like maybe 10% or 15% or something uh, where I can play some hockey, hang out with friends and all that kind of stuff and do the things that I need to do uh, to keep me happy. So there's definitely time outside of med school. You just got to be efficient with your time. Definitely. 100% agree. So let's talk a little bit more about med school. So what do you think of the curriculum so far? Are there any things you really like about it? Any things you dislike about it? We kind of talked about the curriculum in previous videos where I shared this, you know, the block process where we go through different blocks and we're currently in our last block before going into our clinical rotations or transition to clinical practice or TCP as we call it in the second half of second year. So what's your experience so far, Brady? Honestly, I, I've really liked the curriculum overall. Um, the pros that come off right off the top of my head, our block leaders are absolutely phenomenal. Like this, like shout out to Dr. Moore right now in our neuro block. He's been stellar. He's actually our small group leader. Too, yes. So that, that's an even bigger bonus. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we've had some phenomenal doctors uh, lead the way. So that's really nice. Uh, I like I like the, the general structure. Uh, there's th things to maybe improve. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but maybe the... Um, I remember block A, like it was really public health heavy. And I do agree that public health is really important, but maybe spreading it out more throughout all the blocks. Like we do see some, but yeah. instead of getting like such a heavy overload of public mm -hmm. health, I feel like just spreading it out a bit more throughout all the blocks would have been maybe more effective. And uh, other things too, I was actually talking to some buddies about this, but emphasizing lifestyle a little bit more uh, in med school, such mm -hmm. as like exercise, nutrition, sleep, stress management. They do. They are starting to emphasize it a little bit, but I feel like they could push on that a little bit more. But uh, those are just a couple of things. But overall, like the curriculum is pretty solid. And uh, I really like too, the exposure that we got to um, to family medicine and elephant meat. That was really cool. I really yes. like the cadavers that we're exposed to in the yeah. labs. That's super helpful. And I like the way the small groups are structured where you can kind of bounce ideas around and all that stuff. So overall, I think they're doing a really good job. Great. But I agree. I agree. You brought up some great points. Okay. So I guess another question I have for you, Brayden, that you're talking about how medical school takes 60% of your time and then your extra, your, your company takes 30% and then maybe 10 to 15% free time. Right? So how do you manage all of that? I and think that's a question <laughs> that many people, yeah. you know, try to wrap their heads around. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, God, I could, I could go off on this for <laughs> hours, but I'll try to keep it concise here. Um, yeah, so I think it all comes down to, to time management and also managing your focus and the distractions around you. So <clears throat> for example, if you're, if I'm doing a hockey advising task for, and I think it's going to take about an hour, I really lean into that task and don't start checking my phone. I don't go on social media. I don't uh, go to the bathroom, whatever. I just like lean into that task right. for an hour, get it done. And then once it's time to do, you know, watch three lectures or something, I get that done. You know, I'm really like big on like focusing on the task at hand. So that's one thing. Another thing I use is I, I use this app called Notion. I create like a task manager out of it. I'm really big on like writing down all your tasks and all the little things that you need to do and then prioritizing them to see like what needs to be done first type thing. So I use that. Uh, I use like calendar apps to make sure I know, um, you know, where I need to, sh like where I need to be and when. Uh, so I'm really big on that. I think something that does help with time management, specifically to McGill, I can't speak for all medical schools if they're all like that, but we have a pass-fail curriculum, right? That too. And the yeah. fact that there isn't that added stress to really aim for 90 plus all the time because you're competing with your classmates, the fact that rather 
especially in our small groups, we really help each other out. We're all here to help each other pass and do well and excel in the fields that we're interested in. There's not really that competition, so that kind of takes away a lot of stress and I guess time that you would otherwise spend to maximize your score on an exam. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that as much, you know? 100%, 100%. That's a huge shift. In undergrad, like, most of my time was spent on maximizing my grades, mm -hmm. which, which you need to, right? In Canada, it's super competitive. You have to do it. But in med school, because it's past fail, we're not saying you don't study and that we, right. we like put it aside, but you, pri you put a little less time and effort in that and you focus on more on your extracurriculars. You can do that. I mean, you can choose to get 90s and 95s sure. if you want. Yeah. But the way, like, I think we're both on the same page on this is that there's not really that much added value to get that 95% versus getting maybe a 75 or 80% range where you get like the main concepts type thing. So I think they're like, it's, it's such a huge, like, stress relief to know that and it allows you to be a bit more productive outside of the classes. I agree and for me it's like because of that I get that extra two hours of sleep and I get that yeah. extra Friday night where I could go out and say you know what Friday night I could afford to take it off and spend time with my girlfriend, spend time with my friends or just go do whatever I feel like doing or just take some time off for myself you know. Yeah for sure and one thing I really want to touch on that time back to productivity if you're mm -hmm. feeling good, so if you're doing the right things, like eating right, I, I'm really big on this and I'm a bit biased, but be. If, no. if you eat right, if you exercise, you know, the right amount where you feel good, if you're sleeping right, if you're spending time with friends, spending time alone to de-stress for st stress management, all these things, they're really, really important because they allow you to perform at your absolute best, which enables you to focus better and to, you know, manage your time better that way. So I think the lifestyle piece there is really important not to neglect that not only in med school, but in life altogether to be more productive, but also happier as well. So I agree. I think that's a great point that you brought up, Brayden. And I guess maybe we talked about so many things in this video already. So maybe we could get closer to the conclusion where we could talk about if you have any advice for any aspiring medical students that really, really want to get into medical school, what would you tell them? Yeah, I feel like my... You sent me the questions a while ago, so I was thinking about <laughs> it, but we touched on the unique aspect, right? Yeah. It's really important be, like, to have something that makes you very unique in your applications will really set you apart from the rest. Because yeah, it's important to do the research, the, the community service, you know, the volunteering, all like a few extracurriculars, whatever. It's important to have that because the, the schools do look at that. But then beyond that, because everyone's kind of on the same playing field, everyone's doing that, that's competitive, that's applying. You want something that's really gonna set you apart. So for me, hockey is like that big thing. For many, it's the Greek dancing, it's the Greek culture, all that, that's what sets them apart. Find something that, like a leadership role of some sort, something you're passionate about. Uh, find something that you can do outside of school that can really set you apart from everyone. I would say that's a really big one. What we touched on previously too is another big part is to um, you know stay healthy, do all the right little habits, all that kind of stuff. That really goes a long way too. And uh, last message too that I want to give out is to never give up. Like it took me three times. It took Manny three times to get in. There's guys I know it took them like five or six times. There's a girl in our class actually took her eight times really? to get into the dentistry wow. program. I mean, and she amazing. kept applying every single year. She kept improving. She never gave up, and she got in. So hopefully that story serves as hope for you guys to you know keep pushing through. We know it's difficult. We know it can be dark times when you don't get in and all that stuff. But keep pushing, keep getting better, and eventually you will get in if you want it badly enough. I think, so, I think Braden should be a motivational speaker. <laughs> if he didn't go into medicine, he should be a motivational speaker. But maybe you could do that on the side, Braden. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. But, but I think that, no, like the points you raised were excellent. And I think something to add on to the unique aspect is not to say that you shouldn't do the typical things that you would expect on a CV, right? Still go out to shadow physicians, get some hospital clinical experience, whether it's work-related or volunteer. Uh, you should still try to get research because especially, you know, something like McGill or U of T or these big research focused schools love to see research and potentially publications on your application. And finally, Braden mentioned this one, get involved in a leadership role if possible, or at least show that you progress to a leadership role. For me in the Greek community, I was once a member of my dance group. I became dance coordinator and then I became the president of the, of the organization, right? So that showed dedication that showed leadership and teamwork and communication skills and time management, you know. And so community involvement. Community and, involvement, yeah. you know, community service is another big topic, yeah. right? Yeah. So, awesome. So, Brayden, I want to thank you once again for being on the channel, for bringing all, this, all these insightful comments. 
I'm sure our viewers will very much appreciate them. And again, big shout out to your, your company, Advancement Hockey. I remind you all to check out the page, even if you're not into hockey. Some of the videos are also outside of hockey. Some, some topics I've seen in your videos that you talk about are not necessarily focused to hockey. They can be applied outside of hockey, right? Like yeah, the lifestyle just, thing that yeah, you're talking about. Lifestyle Sweet. stuff, the adversity stuff, all that. We Obviously, there's a hockey twist to them. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I love talking about that kind of stuff. So, yeah, hopefully you guys got some value out of it. Hopefully, you know, it was, it was good advice. And uh, I wish you guys, you know, all the success in the world. So. All right, Brayden, thanks again uh, for being on the channel and for, for taking this opportunity and taking time out of your day to, to film this video. Um, and yeah, if you like these types of videos, I have many ideas to interview other medical students that come from different backgrounds or that are maybe at different schools. So if you like them, you know, leave, uh, leave your ideas in the comment section down below. Don't forget to check out Braden's social media platforms. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one.